Hello everyone. Welcome everyone. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome. Welcome, welcome to yet another wonderful um, discussion on your design development and that is in respect to getting your fashion collection um, done and ready ready for production so if you're new here i just want to say welcome welcome i'm just going to wait for people to join in before we get started today is going to be a quick class it's not going to be as long as we used to do it before Welcome if you're just joining us for the first time. Thank you so much for joining in. Yeah, people are joining in now. Welcome, guys. Hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm having a wonderful day, but today's a bit cold here in London, so it's raining at the moment and it's really cold. So, yeah, that's how I'm spending my Saturday afternoon with amazing people like you guys. Welcome. So I'm just gonna get ready. Just wait for people to start joining in before we kick into, into what we have for you guys today. Welcome guys. Yes, 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 yes. Please, um, you can leave a comment and just tell us where you're coming, where you're watching us from your name and we would love to meet you welcome guys it's been a while okay so we're two minutes in i'm just gonna give people 30 more seconds for us to get started then we kick off all right all right all right all right all right I'm just gonna check the comments yeah to make sure everything okay welcome guys so let's get started let us get started okay my name is ivy liberty for those of you that don't know me i oh welcome guys present and ready to learn i'm so grateful that is um dn one diani i hope i'm our I, I hope <laughs> i'm um saying that correctly please forgive me forgive me but welcome please tell us where you're calling from or where you're um watching us from that would be so amazing so people get to know you thank you so much for joining in now if you're joining us for the very first time we are talking about how to create your own fashion collection We've started a long time ago, so if this is your first time joining us on this. Oh, Lagos, Nigeria, welcome, welcome. I love that. Celia from Ghana. Oh, my God, that's amazing. Welcome, guys. Welcome. I'm so grateful you guys are here. So we have started. Um, oh, thank you so much, Celia. Thank you. See, Celia, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so we've started this um, series on how to create your own fashion collection and uh, we've gone in depth like weeks ago. We started off um, by talking about your research, your primary research, your secondary research, um, how to create your mood board, the difference between primary and secondary research, um, different inspirations behind creating your own collection. We had a lot to talk about and those videos are live on our channel so feel free to go back to those videos to catch up with what we're having what we have for you today but today um sadly is going to be our very last um master class on this series on how to create your own fashion collection but don't worry we're going to get more um to come in the future but today is going to be our last um, master class on that and we'll make sure we touch on all the things that we need to touch on to get your collection up and ready so i hope you guys have gone through the videos if you've been here with us just to refresh your memory on all that we've been talking about i think it's a really good idea for you to go back and visit those videos so you 
have a you'll have the gist of what we've been talking about ever since so today we're going to be talking about how to create your um design development so you have your primary research ready you have your secondary research ready you have created your mood board we talked about that last time you have created your customer board your digital presentation board um what well, again you've done research on everything that you're talking about you've done research on your fabrication your fabric swatches you've done your research on your trend so depending on the season that you're designing for you've done your research on that um um you've done your research on your color palette as well so you've talked about or you've um gone ahead to look at the colors that you'll be looking at for your collection so we talked about all of that in all our videos so they are way um um they're lined up on our you know our channel so you can just feel free to go and check those out but today we're going to be talking about the design collection and design development that i talked about and today basically just to for those that don't know what a design development is i'm just going to break it down for you so you have an idea of what that is all about so um and if you've got your notepad your um, sketchbook and everything please get them ready because we're going to be talking a lot to talk a lot on um, design development today so just a brief um introduction or brief definition of what a design development is for your fashion collection so it's basically the process of you using your fragmented research ideas so you've gotten your ideas from different parts of your research that's from your sketchbook that's your primary and your secondary research so your design development is the process of using fragmented ideas from your research to produce a whole collection but within that collection you're producing different garment within that collection if that makes sense now um, i'm going to before i go further i'm going to introduce myself for those that are just joining in my name is ivy liberty i am the founder of sims and notches i am a phd researcher in fashion design and textile i am a lecturer in fashion uh, marketing production and uh, I am also um, a lecturer. I teach um, undergrad, year two undergrad um, student, fashion manufacturing, and I teach postgrad, that's master's student in creative pattern cutting. So, and I've got um, more than eight years experience in the fashion industry here in the UK. So um, I just want to make you guys so understand that you are in the right place when it comes to fashion. And what I do, I do one-on-one -on -one classes on um, starting your own fashion design, um, everything about pattern cutting, the things that you need to know, industrial standard, we're talking about word standard, we're not talking about um, um, things from, you know, like they're not, they're not backed up with um, research. I'm talking about things that are backed up with research and word standard um techniques and methods that you need to get your fashion design to the next level so that's what i'm all about and if you want to know like um the one-on-one -on -one classes that we offer just feel free be be free to send me an email on our um email address which is sims and notches at gmail.com is on our um description on our channel feel free or just send me um, a message on Instagram or TikTok. We are everywhere on Facebook. All our details are down the description box below. So feel free to, um, if you want to ask any question in respect to maybe outside of what we're talking about today, feel free to shoot me a message and I would endeavor to reply. So yeah, you are in a good place. And yeah, um, so design development. So that's what we're talking about today. So it's basically the process of you using fragmented research ideas, creating different garment within a collection. That's what your design development is. So there are different approaches when it comes to design development. And as a designer, you must include the approaches to a design development such as color, so you need to think about the color that you're going to be using for the collection. You're going to be thinking about the structure or the shape of the garment that you are designing. You need to think about the silhouette like I talked about. You need to think about the 
proportions and patterns that you're going to be using for this collection now the big because when you're creating your own fashion um collection the design development is the most one of the most important aspect you can't skip this because if you skip this you are losing a lot when it comes to getting that authentic um aesthetic about your design so you don't want to miss this part which this is why i say this part is really important for you guys especially when creating your first fashion collection so your design development when creating your first fashion collection or any collection in general you need to make sure you have this different approaches in mind that is your color the shape the structure or the silhouette of your garment um, you need to make sure that you have the details the proportions the patterns of the garments within the collection now when it comes to your design development, you need to be de developing a lot of garments within your create within your collection. It depends on the kind of collection you're going for. For me, because um, I don't know if you notice that we are doing, I'm basically designing my own collection, and that's why I had to just say, you know what? Let me um, invite my beautiful people to learn one or two things during the process and that's why we having this we are having this master class maybe i'll be able to um bless one or two people out there with knowledge that they need to get move their um collection to the next um level so that's why i'm doing this so in my collection i'm doing um like a autumn winter it's a mixed season so you can wear it in any season so I'm basically having, I need to, in within that collection, I'm going to be, to, I'm going to be looking at um, tops, that's top from your waist upwards, um, bottoms, which is skirt, trousers, then overgarment, which is like jacket, you know, overcoat, things like that, trousers, then dresses as well. So within that collection, I'm going to be having different garment within that collection. So when you're talking about your design development, you have to think of every garment that is going to be involved in that collection. Now, first of all, the materials that you need for your design development, I'm going to tell you in a bit. So these are the materials you need. You make sure you have your fine liner. Um, I've got, this is a brown one, but this is a, this is a fine liner. And this is basically for quick sketches. Or you need to have you and you need to have your pencil. So prefer preferably you should have um, an HB pencil, two HB pencil or HB pencil. Why? Because you don't want a very dark pencil because your design development. The difference between your design development and your actual illustration for your collection is that your design development. That is why it's called development. It is a development of your ideas. So it's not the final um, illustration. So you need a very light pencil to just draw quick sketches. This, again, this is you developing your ideas. This is not the final one. So you don't have to really be perfect at this stage. This stage is basically to generate all your ideas. Like I said before, your fragmented ideas from your research you're trying to play with ideas to make sure something sticks. Now, when you are doing your design development, you need to make sure that you're not so drawn onto the very first idea that comes to your mind. So you're not going to be like, oh, I have this idea. Oh, this is the one I'm going for. No, that you don't have to go like that because at the end of the day, when you, the practice is a good practice for a fashion designer when it comes to this aspect is basically you need to expand your uh, um, ideas, your thinking. You need to explore because if you just decide to fall for the very first idea that comes to mind, it's always limiting and you don't want that. You want to make sure you play with a lot of ideas as possible. Like you have to play with so much ideas that you're like, okay, you know what? I'm done with this. This is enough. Like you should make sure you've, you've expanded your thinking when it comes to that because with that you have a lot of things to play with if you have limited ideas it's it's very it's very risky to play with because if you have like five ideas you're like or you're stopped 
with just five of them as opposed to you having like 20 30 so it's the more the more the merrier so the more you have the better for you that's basically what it's all about so don't just fall in the trap of just saying oh i have this i had a dream this was the uh, most amazing idea that i've ever had i am going to go for it and that's it no when it comes to your design development remember it's not the final piece it's an idea that you are developing so you need to make sure you expand on that and don't just settle for anything that comes to mind first so I just wanted to clarify that, yeah? So once you have the types of garment you're looking at, like I said before, like we're looking at tops, we're looking at buttons, that skirts, um, trousers, um, overcoat. Some people might have jumpsuit within the collection. Some might have dresses, some might have overcoat and stuff like that. Once you've decided on that, what you need to do next is basically get your materials, which what we talked about, you need your pencil and you need your fine liner, you need your eraser, you need your sharpener. Those are basically the things that you need. When it comes to the layout of your design development, you need to make sure you have a layout of an A3 landscape paper. So it's something like this. So this is an A3 sheet. And when it comes to your A3 sheet, you don't need a thick um, paper. You need a very light, like translucent, like translucent um, paper, like a tracing paper. That's what you need, basically, because, like I said, like a very so you can see through. I don't know if you can see my hands here. You can see through this paper, and the reason being is basically, like I said, you are developing your designs. And you want to make sure that you, you know, you, when you use your um, tracing paper, you're kind of layering ideas on top of each other. So your, maybe you have like a sketch. You have a sketch like this. This, this is a sketch now. Yeah. With your, or you have a sketch like this with your, um, tracing paper, you can lay this on top. As you can see, you can see underneath. So, for instance, that's a sketch. You can always draw on top of that tracing paper to get more ideas instead of you drawing again and again and again. So, with your um, translucent paper or your transparent paper, you're able to trace ideas. Remember, this is just development. This is not the final product, okay? So, that's why your tracing paper is important. Now, why do, if you might ask, you might say, oh, why do I not use, just use an A4 paper? An A4 paper is really limiting because you want a situation whereby, and that's why you need to have it in a landscape form. <clears throat> the reason being is because you need as much as uh, figures on the page as possible. So at this point, you are not minimizing any space. You're utilizing every space within the paper. So you want to make sure you have enough um, form or template or um, sketch within that layer. And that's why the bigger the paper, the better. But um, you might ask, okay, why don't we go for a bigger paper, like an A4 paper, A, I mean A2 paper. A2 paper is like twice the size of this one. You don't need that because it will be too big but the standard industrial um, size or measurement of the paper that you need is an a3 paper for your design development and again when you when it comes to the final stage of your presentation of your illustration you need an a3 paper because an a4 paper which is the normal letter paper that we use for documents and um, 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 important things um not important things like documents um the reason why we don't use papers like that is because it's too small and it's very limiting and you get to start tracing again and again and again so you don't need that so the a3 paper is the standard industrial paper that you need for your design development especially when it comes to your visual your visuals you need your a3 paper um a3 sketchbook a3 sketch pad a3 journal, 
um, A3 layout paper, A A3 um, tracing paper, everything that you're going to do when it comes to your des fashion design, visuals, everything about your fashion design portfolio should be in an A3 um, format. And it's always advisable to have it on landscape instead of um, portrait. So that's about that, about the paper. So your materials, again, your fine liner, your pencil, your eraser, your sharpener, your A3 paper, and make sure it's light enough that you can be able to see through. And you have, um, as well as your um, tracing paper, yeah? <clears throat> and again, another thing that you need to bear in mind, you need to ask yourself this question. So th there are a couple of questions you need to ask yourself when com when designing your when um going through your design development you need to like i said it's not like the final product your design development again um you need to decide if you're going to be tracing on on a form or are you going to be tracing just the outlines of the garment you're generating ideas so it's not the final product again like i said you know, so you need to ask yourself that question. What format are you going with? Now, when you are doing your design development, you need to make sure you always refer back to your um, sketchbook. It's really important because sometimes, and it, ha it has happened to me before, some of my students, when I just started designing, um, when it came to the design development, I started working outside the sketchbook so when I finished, when I went through, like, just imagine you going through like 50 designs. And at the end of the day, you look back at your designs and you look at your, your sketchbook because you were not working with bold materials. You, I ended up just designing something totally different. So you don't want to waste your time, especially when you've spent so much time drawing and sketching ideas. So the beautiful thing about having your sketchbook with it, with your design, when you're doing your design development is basically, you don't waste time, you know, you're always referring back to your primary research so you don't go out of what you are intending to do, which is your research. Again, your research is, your design development is a fragmented version of your research bringing those fragmented um, ideas together and making it a cohesive collection so that's why you need your um, research that's your sketchbook that has your primary and your secondary research with you you need that when you are going through your design development very important so i am going to show you so um, we've talked about the materials that you need We've talked about, um, okay, now let's go into the approaches when it comes to design development. Now, you need to ask yourself this question, like I said, what is the format that you're going with? Are you gonna be working on forms? Forms are basically an outline of a body form on your sketchbook. Are you gonna be working with that? Or is this design development going to be basically you just drawing the outlines of the garment on on paper without any formal guidance of you know so are you going to be going with that are you going to be thinking about um um how now you when you're doing that as well you need to make sure you think about the colors as well you need to make sure you're thinking about the details of the garment you need to make sure that they are in a specific format so I'm going to show you an example, but I'm just going to bring this out so we, we, you have an idea before. So when I show you the example, you understand where I'm coming from. So like I said, have an idea. Are you going to be designing on a form or a sketch or a template of a sketch? Are you going to be um, working freehand? Are you going to be drawing the outlines of this garment just on the paper without any form? So again, when you, especially when you're starting off, you don't have to be looking after, I mean, going for perfection at this point. Don't say, oh, my designs are whack, my designs are not good enough. I don't think, you know, a lot of times, a lot of designers get stuck. So sorry about the noise. 
a lot of times a lot of designers get stuck in that uh, mentality of you know limiting their ideas and saying oh no i don't have enough uh, drawing skills to make to to make this dress or whatever pop i really i know it's not good enough so i wouldn't draw so it stops them from doing what they are supposed to do now again your design development is not about perfection it's about generating ideas so what however whack or tacky you think it is put it on paper the most important thing is getting that idea from your head down to your paper and start to develop um, develop that um, idea. So that's what you you should be after. Okay. So um, think about when it comes to forms. Think about um, you can take a picture of a dummy or uh, like a dummy is basically kind of like a um, a mannequin, a fashion mannequin that we use for draping. You can basically take a picture of it, um, scan that, and you can always multiply that dummy on multiple pages and trace on top of that. Or you can even um, get that online. You can get templates online as well. Just say fashion illustration and templates. You can get that. Um, you can trace that and make multiple copies of that traced one and just draw on top of that. The most important thing again we're generating ideas we're not doing we're not going for perfection at this point okay so um when it comes to your design development is your design de development is going the sheet is going to be really rough because you're going to be thinking about structure you're going to be thinking about annotations annotation are basically annotations are basically words that you have besides your sketches so for example if you want like a if if your um sketch has a very interesting neckline you can just write it there like a square neckline you can put an annotation there so you remember or if it's got an interesting pocket you can just say oh that has a pocket you can put that annotation behind that sketch or if it's, if if your sketch is of a different material you can just write that and say this is a mesh material this is a cotton material so you can just basically add annotations to your sketchbook i mean to your sketches or your designs yeah so that's why i said your design development sheet is going to be really messy it's going to be rough and again at this stage always introduce tribe i'm looking at the time i don't want to go past one hour okay so um at this point we are looking at um colors as well a lot of people they focus on the sketches removing the details and not even thinking about the colors so the the most important thing about introducing colors when you're do, doing your design development is basically you don't have when it comes to the final stage of your presentation you don't have to go through a lot of work to start thinking oh colors oh um fabric choices oh this all that during your design development is better to start develop, um, developing your color stories or your color palette and the fabrics, the type of fabrics that you're going to be using. Always try at that point to start developing those things because you want to make sure you utilize all the things that you can utilize at this stage. So when it gets to the final illustration you don't have to worry about a lot of things okay so that's why as you can see this is why you have this process with um during your um fashion collection um creation this process of your design development is a very important um aspect of your collection so this is where it's kind of like you at when you're making something maybe if you're cooking this is the where you prep all your ingredients or your you know materials and everything that you need to make a nice beautiful pot of soup this is where you add your seasoning your onions pepper everything to make a nice meal this is basically what it's all about when it comes to design development so this is the stage where you're adding everything together to make sense extracting things that doesn't make sense now you are selecting and deciding on what color what fabric works for what design or what fabric works for you know because you can say okay like uh for an overcoat 
you wouldn't get like a very light chiffon fabric for an overcoat. So this is the time that you need to put your annotation and say for this overcoat, I'm using a cotton fabric or, or wool fabric. So this point is where you need your annotations. So this is what I mean by um, making sure this aspect of your design um, collection, this is the most, one of the most important aspect of it, okay? So don't forget your annotations when it comes to your design development. And again, think about um, working on one idea at a time. So, like I said, we're talking about tops, we're talking about bottoms, but for the bottoms, we're talking about the skirts and trousers, yeah? Don't just jump into, oh, I have two sketches of my skirt. Then you go to trousers. No. Work on that skirt first like expand or explore all the design ideas that you have for your skirt before you go into your jacket before you go into your shirt before you go into other um garments within the collection because what that does is it centers your ideas and it makes you um focus on one idea before jumping to the other because if you've got different ideas all together it's very overwhelming and at the same time you can lose the you can lose the groove within because designing for me personally designing is um it's a process and it's a very intentional process for me because I take my design process very seriously. So anything that would distract me from my designing I try to avoid that. I, I mean, the mood that I am in when I'm designing, the atmosphere, the music, I design with music a lot because I'm a musician as well. So I listen to a lot of music at that process when I'm designing. So everything around me, the ambience around me should make sense when I'm designing, you know, even if you are in a very busy place, but you should make sure you have less distractions when designing because remember, Every design is a good ticket. For me, your designs are kind of like who you are. Because like I said from our previous videos, your design should be able to speak for you. Like without you even mentioning your name, people will see your design and just say, whoa, that's it. That is Cecilia. That is um, DN. That is, you know, um, joys you know they should be able to recognize your design and that is why when you are designing you have to take sh you have to make sure you take proper care when delivering your design so if you if you notice that you're going to be in a rush don't if you notice that you're going to be in a rush when designing i think you should go um just chill out come back whenever you have the time and start designing Okay, so you don't want a situation whereby, and especially when you're working with timelines, I don't call it deadlines, I call it timelines. When you're working with timelines, you have to be specific. You have to make sure that you are working, you have enough time to work on that design. Because just, just imagine you have just one chance to show your design. And because you're rushing, you just say, oh, you know what? Oh, um, the design is due in two weeks. I'm just going to do anything that I can do to, just to get that um, timeline away off my calendar. But you want to make sure you're settled. And if you, if you work with that mindset, you produce something that you're really not proud of. It has happened to me, and that's what I'm telling you. So when it comes to your design, leave enough time, leave enough room for you to be, be in an environment where your design um, ideas just comes out you know so instead of jumping from one garment to the other when doing your design development make sure you focus on one garment before you jump onto the other garment so if you're working with skirts explore your ideas for skirts if you're working with trousers or if you're working on trousers explore all your ideas for your trousers so one garment at a time okay so um remember for your design development a lot of people get trapped with this when you are designing a lot of people concentrate on the front view of their designs you have a lot of crazy ideas but when it comes to the back we don't have any picture or any idea of what the back should look like a lot of people fall in the trap of just creating and focusing their design just on the front part of it 
you want to make sure that as you're designing the front you make sure you need to uh, you you need to make sure that you are also thinking of the back of, of the back of the garment because you don't want to concentrate on the front and at the end of the day how is this person going to get into the garment so all of that details needs to be or um, I mean uh, all of those details need to be in mind when designing your when you um, when developing your ideas okay because a lot of people fall in the trap of just creating the front and neglecting the back you know i get that from my students a lot so from the beginning when you are sketching or you have your form or your um illustration template make sure you have the front and the back of the form or the template that you're going to be sketching on it's very important and um we talked about colors we talked about fabrics and when it comes to fabrics you need to think about the textures of the fabric as well is it a lightweight fabric is it a velvet fabric is it a chiffon fabric is it um a lycra fabric is it stretchy you know what is uh the car what are the characteristics of the fabric that you're going for the weight of the fabric the color of the fabric the texture of the fabric you need to even know how far you're if you're using a lycra fabric how far can this lycra stretch is it a four-way stretch is it a two-way stretch you know are you checking the bias are you checking the salvage so you need to make sure that all these details are during you have to make sure you take note of all these details during the design development hope that makes sense so we are less than 24 minutes to go so um i hope i've covered everything so we have our materials that we need for our design development and we have the approaches to our design development like i said we our approaches are your color your structure um the details the proportions the silhouette the shape of the garment think of those things and I am going to be showing you, and you need to add annotations to your sketches as well. Remember, your design development is not the final look. It is a development of your ideas from your primary and secondary research. So that's what your design development is all about. So I am going to show you different examples of a design development. So again, I told you, on, a, on an A3 um, size paper, and it should be always landscape as opposed to portrait. Not like this, but like this, yeah? So this are, uh, this is a very, very, I think this, this is um, my design development that I did very long time ago. This is going to about five years ago or six years ago. I had this and this is basically what I'm talking about so you see you have all the forms here so this is a full form and the reason why I went for a full form I just wanted to make sure I know how it looks when I know how my design looks on a full form body because I'm designing for a human so the earlier you know how the garment should look on the on the body, the better. Some people, they just, without the head and the form, they just do freehand, which is okay. You can always do that. But for me, I prefer to have like a form that I draw my designs on top. So this is like the front and that's the back. So that's a zipper at the back. So uh, these are different ideas. So for now, I was just working with the skirt beat just the sketch part so de um, developing my um the skirt like you can see that's an interesting skirt there so yeah so you can see different um um shapes of skirt i have this one for the top i think so different tops so i talked about the structure and the shape so for that um this this was a winter I think it was autumn winter collection so it was basically kind of like a circular form or shape um collection so it was very structural because i love structures when it comes to my designs so it that's why you can see it's not like the regular um common shape so again when it comes to your design go as far 
go as well that's human that is your design that is your interpretation there is no wrong or right way when it comes to your design your design is your design is unique to you as long as your customer can be is it i mean as long as your customer is able to gravitate towards it and as long as it's wearable that's all that's important as long as you're happy with it that's what is the most important when it comes to creating your own collection so this is kind of like a a structural shape dress and the fabric was really kind of like a stiff fabric um yeah so that is some of the examples i have when it comes to design development i'm going to show you like a final um final look the final illustration of that collection i will show you but I'm, i need to start from the design sketches or development before i show you the final outcome yeah so for your design development this is another one but this one is basically for dresses so this ones are all dresses so as you can see it's not the final piece these are just generating ideas and you need it wide and big enough for you to see and for you to be able to write notes so this is like a full sheet of what i have so these are designs upon design ideas upon ideas we have i have about like roughly 20 pages of different so we're talking about tops, we're talking about trousers, we're talking about skirts, we're talking different, you know, different ideas, as you can see. And the reason why I use kind of like a permanent, um, uh, a fine liner is for me to be able to see the lines. Because um, I already know, okay, the kind of shape I'm going for. And um, I decided to, so what I did first of all was use my pencil to draw those sketches during that period if i'm not happy with i can be able to rub that sketch with the pencil off so once i'm final with a particular idea then i go ahead to use my um, um fine liner to draw reinforce those lines the outlines for my sketches then that will become permanent because i've noticed sometimes when i have pencils because it's not really um, dark enough I can't really see what I've drawn so or sometimes because of a lot of designs it tends to rub off but if you're now setting of the design you're going for I would advise you after your pencil sketching always use your fine liner to reinforce the outlines of your sketches It's very important and that's what I've done here so that's what I've done here as well so that is um, some examples of how your design development should be some you might have really smaller images it doesn't matter but the most important thing is that you have designs on your sketch on your drawing pad like so so there are different shapes and different sizes so that is for the first part now for the second part when I was talking about details so now this is kind of like a fishnet detail leggings so details here for the next stage of your design development you you can now start adding the details of the garment where you want the zippers to be where you want this um, um buttons to be where you want you know different things that you want within your garment you want to make sure you have those things um, after you have your sketches so when I talked about colors this is so you need different um, type of color like watercolor um, crayons um, acrylic different kind of coloring materials that you have the most important thing you need to make sure it doesn't have to be a certain type of color but as long as you have something to portray the kind of color you're going for, that will be okay. And as long as it works with the paper, the type of paper that you need, that you have, that's good to go. The most important things for having colors introduced in your design development is basically having that idea uh, at the forefront. 
So when it comes to the final illustration, you don't have to waste time on saying or thinking or deciding on what color to use. You already have that. So once you have your sketches done, you have your details done, then you now have your colors. And this is an idea of what I was, I'm talking about when it comes to colors. I have, I have something else. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So the, this is a blue skirt. So I'm just, this, this was one of the designs um, I had. This was one of the designs that I chose for the final, that design made the final collection and I'm gonna show you how that looks um, in a moment. So, so you have your details, you have your colors, and again, you can go ahead to add your swatches on top of all these sketches and write your annotations besides um, your sketches. Um, so that's enough about, I hope you guys have an idea of what that should look like, but that, those are what I mean, what I mean by design development. Those are something that you should be looking at and, um, you have, you need your tracing paper, like I said, because you see, I have more than hundred sketches there. So that's quite a lot. That's why you need your tracing paper to always sketch your, um, what do you call it? Your form your template then you sketch that multiply that on different um, parts of the sheets and you have loads and loads of um, ideas to work with now again there's another type like what I was talking about adding annotations to your design development this is another one but here I have these are just designs from okay so this is this is a project that I worked on a very long time ago but this is kind of like what I was talking about this is kind of like a bone structure so from that you have your primary research you have your secondary research and you have this is uh, these are some of the designs that I worked on the stand I don't know if you can see that so these are some of the designs and with this I'm kind of like developing this idea so I developed this, just a quick sketch with my marker pen to see how that would develop. And you know, this is a dress, a layered ruffled dress. This is a top as well with ruffles uh, on top. Um, you know, I had to change, okay, this is going downwards. What if the ruffles are upwards? So these are what we call our design development. So you can work like that as well. So you have your image, but this one is basically when you're working in your sketchbook. But when we talk about the design development, you can now take all these sketches. So like this one, you can decide to say, okay, I want this kind of idea for the dress. Only this one, you can have like 20 more ideas from just this. And that's why you need your sheets to explore to explore those ideas so just from one of this you can have a lot to play with from just one design if that makes sense so this is within this is your design development within your sketchbook but this is quite limiting so what you need to do for this process is basically take all these ideas on a plain sheet of paper, work on one design after the other and explore as far and well as you can so that you have a lot of ideas to play with. So that's from the sketchbook. Now, the whole point, the whole point for us doing that is to finally produce your final um, collection. Now, for that, I think for that project, it was basically, I had to design 12 main designs. So after you're done with all your design development, development and you're happy with it, you need to now narrow all. So for instance, maybe you've created like about like 20, 25, 50 designs. You need to now narrow it down to the garments, the amount of garments you need within that collection. So for me, I had to narrow about 100 designs to just 12 pieces. 12 pieces. Uh, Marie Diani. 
Welcome, Maridani. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing <laughs> the name. I'm not really good with names. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. But yes, thank you so much for joining in. Now, so if you have a lot, a lot, I mean, lots and lots of lots of designs, you need to now decide on how many of those garments that you're going to be having within the collection. So from that hundred for the loads that I've shown you guys, the examples that I've shown you guys, you have to now narrow it down. So some people might say, okay, within this collection, I just want to make five pieces from this collection. So you have to narrow it down and you need to make sure you pick the best that you have. Like what are the amazing pieces within those designs, um, designs development, what are the main pieces that strike a chord in your heart? So once you are able to finalize them, so you have to now pick those, um, like for the skirt, for the top, now pick the ones that you really love, and those ones will be the ones to make the final collection. So it's kind of like when you go through, when someone goes through an audition for something, now they say, okay, we have um 100 people for this uh, project but we need 10 people so that's basically what it's all about so all your designs you need to now narrow it down to the five or ten or twelve or even 20 collection i mean garment within the collection that you need so all of that remember you've talked about your color um your color your structure of the silhouette and your design development has to have a theme that marries all the garments within that collection together. So you need to have a particular theme. We talked about that last time that we had our masterclass. So there should be a particular theme that is being identified from the primary research that is marrying all this garment together to make it a cohesive garment, a co cohesive collection. So what is that? Is it the color? Is it the structure? Is it the shape? Something has to make everything make sense to be a cohesive collection. So um, this is an example of a lineup. So once that you've gone through that stage, this is an example. This is a collection that I did 2015. This is a long time. So this is a collection of all those um, designs. So we had to now narrow it down to about, okay, I think these are 12. But this for this, because it's the full range, you can only show the front part of it. But if you're showing, because now all this will have individual layouts, like the front, the back, and the technical um the, the spec sheet of each design. I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about. So these are all the um, styles. So for the trouser, for the um, the shorts, the skirt, you know, like a, it's kind of like a tailored um, dress suit. Um, this is an over jacket. So this collection had basically every garment within that collection. So this is how you should have your layout you should have the name of the collection, the year, the season, and yes, so that's the name, the year, or who you, because this was designed for a particular project, so you have to have all those information, and those are the fabric swatches, so as, as much as you have all those designs in mind, you need to make sure you have your swatches as well. So this is the, these are swatches of your fabrics. You have that underneath. So however you want to make your layout is totally up to you. Like I said, this is another project of another, this is another project. So I remember I showed you uh, like a structure, I mean like a, a curvy, very curved outline. I showed you some design development a while ago and this is kind of one of the jacket that made it so like i said each design will have like the front for this one i didn't add the back but here you can see the technical these are the technical spec so these are the technical um flats for that um garment so this garment is not just the jacket and the bottom but it has a different it has like a top and a bottom within that jacket so for the technical flat this is what you would need to display so that's the front and that's the back 
that's the top inside and that's the bottom so all of that is this so for your final presentation of your design after your design development and everything you need to make sure you have a picture or a visual of how the garment looks visually with colors with fabrics and everything which is what we have here but for this collection i did a bit of um so this is kind of like a structure like the name of this collection is called rhythm of shapes so it's rhythm of shapes so different shapes coming together to create a collection and that's why you can see it's really conspicuous like i told you i love structure so this is how it looks and um these are kind of the in oh welcome jays welcome thank you so much i'm so glad that you're here so these are kind of like the theme of the collection so we have that at the background so you want to make sure once somebody sees it for the very first time they are able to know oh i understand where this is coming from that's what you basically want to show your audience and these are the technical flats we're going to be doing some classes on technical flats like using adobe illustrator and photoshop to create your technical flat but that's going to be sometime in the future when i have the time but we'll, we'll get that done so i can in case you want to learn that because it's very technical and it requires a lot of skills so if you're interested in that just let me know then i can add that to some of the videos that we're going to be doing in the future so to create that so you need that you need your technical flat you need your final illustration and you need some accents from your research add that to the background and that's your full collection presentation i hope that makes sense so this is another one as well so this is the main these are some um pictures from the sketchbook and this is the technical flat that's the that's number two of the collection so it's quite there are a lot okay this is i told you about this before so this is um the top and the bottom again this is the same collection as this one so this is i think this is garment two and this is garment three so you have your layout of your final 12 or five pieces you need the layout for that your um collection the season everything about that collection but just the front part of all the pieces together on a page like this like this once you have that each piece each piece of the garment within that collection has to have another layout so there you have the front and you have the back you have your technical flats along that piece so it's kind of like you need to present it in a portfolio as well so that's if you're designing for a client or designing for other people even if you're designing for yourself you need to make sure you have all these things in your file because someone can say five years after okay now i'm talking about this collection and i did this 2015 that's a long time so we always need to always refer back to some of the creations that we've made and that's why i tend to always even if i'm designing for myself you need to make sure you have all this in a very professional manner and file them put them in an a3 file what is the first number okay what is the first number in making a collection okay um jay's thank you so much for that question the first thing that you need to do the first number okay are you talking about um when creating a collection like i said it can start from five um collection five garments within a collection to 12 so whatever even some people even start with just three like skirt bottom and dress so it doesn't really matter the number but as long as it's more than two or three garments within co that collection because a collection cannot be a collection when it's just one so from three to five is a good place to start when creating a collection i hope that answers your question and again, we have full videos on all the details when it comes to last from the beginning. We have them on our um, channel. So you can always refer back to our past masterclasses and you would be able to 
get one or two things from there but yeah for a collection as long as it's more than one or two no as long as it's more than two garments that's a collection but if it's just one that's not a collection okay so a collection is basically um different parts of your um garments coming together to make one collection so it doesn't have to be a lot but two i mean three not two three to five is something that you can work with so the more you are experiencing it you can now extend so even if you want to start like a fashion brand or anything just start with five pieces like if it's something that you want to sell because you want to be able to as well give your customers a lot of um, options to play with because some people might say i just don't want the jacket i want just the skirt some people might say i just want the top i don't want the skirt so you need to make sure you have a lot of options for people to play with because if you just do maybe a skirt and a, and a trouser or a top and a trouser people will be like oh okay oh do you have a jacket because it's kind of windy this time i really want a i like the collection but do you have it in a jacket and if you don't have it it's kind of like a it's not fair on your part. So the more you have, the better. But to start with, I advise people to start with from three to five. That's the smallest you can go for. So you can go as much. Some people even go as far as 50 collection, but that's this big brands. Once you have demands for it, then you can go as far and more as you can. Okay, so guys, it's already one hour and I hope everything we talked about today makes sense. Um, again, please, if you have any questions, any feedbacks or anything, please don't hesitate to, um, send us an email. I'll be so glad to reply you. And if you want inquiries about the one-on-one -on -one classes, when it comes to fashion design, or if you're new to fashion design or pattern cutting, and you want to know everything that has to do with that so creating your designs to making it into a garment if you want to know that we offer one-on-one -on -one classes on those um, um topics so feel free i'm gonna give you all my i've been so b-a-m-a phd now all the knowledge that i've gathered in everything that has to do with fashion and pattern cutting is what you are going to be getting so hit me up if you want anything like that um we'll be coming to countries as well so wherever you're from just let me know if you want us to come to your city we'll be there by the perfect grace we've got next year um once again thank you so much for joining me again please don't forget to send your comments or your feedbacks to our email if you want anything that has to do with pattern cutting or fashion design thank you so much my name is Ivy. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much for joining me. Please share. Let people know about this channel. And until next time, have a blessed weekend. Thank you so much and bye for now. Bye. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day.